My father built a mansion on the mountain. I was chasing my dreams. Welcome back friends to the shop. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how to put together an official U.S. Forest Service hand tool sharpening kit. Now this will be everything that you need to sharpen. Shovels, axes, pulaskis, and it all fits neatly in a very small kit. We can start with the bag here. Funny thing that every time I go to a Forest Service class, they are always fond of telling you that a dull to tool is a dangerous tool. And I always think, well, a sharp tool is a dangerous tool as well. But with the bag, this is a made by Coaxure. This is actually made for fusees. Fusees are what uh, we'll carry in our pack uh, that we could, it's basically a glorified flare uh, with an opening in the back so you can stack them. Uh, this is what we uh, use to start burnouts, but it makes a really good tool holder because it's, it's compact. So what you're gonna have in your, in your kit is gonna be a, a 12 inch mill bastard file. You're gonna have a, an official FSS uh, sharpening guide, which I'll show you how to use. Official government US <laughs> wood sharpening file handle, a uh, piece of safety leather guard there, uh, and a Lansky Pusk, Pucks, which is uh, my own edition. Uh, but I don't, I feel the file is a little bit too coarse, especially if you're chopping, uh, if you're a faller and using your ax for chopping, it's nice to finish it off with a stone rather than the coarse file. So this right here, this sheath, this is a design of my uh, grandfather when I was going through his things, uh, when we were dividing tools up, he had all of his nice files in a cardboard sheath like this. Why is that important? Well, just like your kitchen knives, these files here have uh, very hard cutting edges. And if you, do, if you throw it in there with a stone or with another file, they, it will really dull itself, it beat itself up. So let's make a sheath real quick. I'll show you how to do that quick and easy. And then we'll go on to the uh, angle guide. I deconstructed one of my granddad's original file sheaths. And the best I could tell is he used uh, uh, th this kind of waxed uh, vanilla, what do you call it, file folders. And it's, I can see why now, it's the perfect length, it's probably just what he had on hand. Now if you don't have these, you can use cardboard, uh, just anything that's got a little structure, and you just need it to be long enough to cover up uh, the teeth. You don't need to worry about the, the tang right there. And I'm betting, if we were to follow that fold right there, That might be just right. It might be a little small for this one, if we can see here. I think it'll be perfect. And he just folded these kind of like a taco. So I'm gonna use gaffer's tape. Uh, anything you have, granddad used masking tape on his. It was just, just yellow masking tape, nothing fancy. Uh, I, you could use electrical tape, any tape you have will work fine. Put two, two layers on the bottom right there because you're gonna shove that thing in uh, so you want maybe double layer so you don't push it out the bottom. These files can be dangerous. They're really sharp. To have them loose in a pack is just never a great idea. And we'll just do one wrap around here. Now don't wrap these too tight or they're really hard. Uh, it can be really hard to get out. You almost need, need, a, need a tool. Okay, once I did that, then I'll put this on a little bit of an angle, about 45 degree and you're holding this together just to keep it closed, but not an overlap, 50%. You could just finish up on that paper there with a wrap to keep that from coming unraveled. Now you've got a, a good safety sheath there that uh, comes out nice and easy. They'll last for years. Some of the ones that Granddad had in his toolbox, they look like they went, dated back to the 50s. Um, just a real good way to protect your files. When you buy nice, expensive files, you want to look after them. If you, if you don't bang them around, uh, they'll last a long time. Okay, now let's go, uh, let's build a leather safety tab. Uh, first, I'll explain to you why this is important and uh, why we use them with the Forest Service. I'll demonstrate that seat leather safety cover, cover on the newly maintain my A1 far, fire tool, my Rogue Pulaski. It's my favorite one. Some might say this smacks of safety sallyism. I used to think that too, but anymore I, I, I kind of disagree. What I find is, you know, you read these things and you learn these things that the Forest Service has developed over the last hundred years or so, and you know, they, they do these things for a reason, is because they've experienced accidents and such. And a lot of guys are just not used to working with really sharp tools. You might buy an ax and you know you never sharpen it and you know just 
it's not that big of a risk filing something like that, but you take, uh, you get into a remote location where medical services are not anywhere near, you know, it's, there's just no downside to it. It doesn't cost anything. It's easy to do. And it just gives you a little bit extra layer of protection. And here you can see, so as you're filing, you know, of course we want to file into the edge like this. It's easy if you got carried away to slip and get your finger cut in there, right? So having that leather on there, if you do come in contact with it, that leather is going to stop and prevent your hand from getting clipped on there. So that's the only reason for it. And I think it's worth doing. So let's make one real quick and then we'll move on to the next stuff. One thing every professional homeowner is going to want to have is a basic leather repair kit. I remember growing up and granddad had a little toolbox just like this. And some of these things are his, uh, like, uh, for example, these shears, I believe. No, these shears are my dad's. Uh, this was granddad's right there, I believe, right there, that hole punch. I remember as a kid uh, getting bigger and bigger and my belt, he you know, made a leather belt for me. And he would, uh, when it got bigger, he'd take this out and punch a hole in it. <laughs> it's a, a good memory. But what you want to keep in here, and as you come across it, you know, scraps of leather and different things are always handy for all sorts of things. And leather work is not something I'm very good at, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it. Good pair of shears like this. All of these things, these are common things that you're going to find at a garage sale. And that's per perfect sort of thing. So nothing super scientific about it. Just cut yourself a piece about... Uh, an inch by two inches or so, roughly. An old leather belt will work just fine. Usually I cut a slit in these, but I think we could probably just take a punch. You could just punch a hole like that in the center. It's probably just about right. Slit might be better, but we'll see here. There we go, yeah, it'll, it'll work itself out. You want it to fit tight. You don't want it just spinning and flopping around on there so you can orient it this way to protect your hand. But that's it. There's nothing more to it than that. So here's our complete file package right there. Now with the sheath, you can take this thing and, and you can toss it in the toolbox, toss it in the back of your truck, sock box, whatever. It's not going to get uh, beat up, dinged up. So also your handles. So I'll, I'll see if I can put up. I don't know if I can find all of this stuff if I can find it. These are the handles that I was issued on the last fire I was on. Um, this is what they look like when they were new. That's raw wood right there. So you want to cover that with boiled linseed oil and that will protect that and keep that from cracking, uh, keep it moisturized. And that, what's cool about the boiled linseed oil is all this stuff, if you take care of it, it really takes on a character, you know, that you don't get from plastic and stuff. And, and the longer you have it, the more you tend to look after it and, and you just enjoy using it and it gets that weathered, a little weathered over time and it's, just one of those things, you know, the little things in life that make life enjoyable. Uh, next is the Lansky Puck. Now these, I've never been issued these before. This is the very first one that I purchased um, almost, I think almost 20 years ago. These are wonderful little stones. It, what it gives you, it's just a traditional sharpening stone. It gives you a coarse on one side and a fine on the other. But what makes this one unique is, are those beveled edges. I find that it's really easy to put in a back pocket or you can even put it in a shirt pocket. All the ones that I have that don't have the bevel edges, they're all cracked and broken off because it's very vulnerable. This is a great stone. And I, I like this better than the file because it's so much finer. The file is a little bit coarse. So let me show you how I use this and kind of the difference of before and after what the surface looks like with file versus stone. What you're looking at here is an edge that's been uh, filed, sharpened with a file right there. So you can see not a super high polish on it, serviceable, definitely. And if you're just chopping in the dirt and stuff with the Pulaski, that's more than enough. But if you're actually cutting with it, um, a stone makes a big difference. So I'll start with the coarse side. Now you want to put some sort of a lubricant, not a lubricant, but a, something, um, oh my, WD-40 gave up there. There we go. Something, um, a, a liquid of some sort that's not an oil. Now WD-40 is not really an oil, it's more of a, a solvent. A kerosene diesel is my favorite, but they're kind of harder to pack around. Um, WD-40 comes in a nice convenient can, but the liquid on there carries those chips away. But uh, very simple. So we'll just do this side right here and we'll show you before and after. Already you can see taking the you know, kind of taking some of that uh, grit out of there or all those lines. And I'll flip it over and use the fine side. 
after you file, it doesn't take much more than just a couple more. You want to make it nice and sharp right there. That's it. Now you've got a beaut that is very, very sharp, but wouldn't have cut paper before. Uh, it'll definitely cut paper right there. Just keep that in your pocket when you're cutting and limbing and stuff and just hit that every couple hours or so. It'll make your work a lot easier. Now we'll look to our handle. If you have a brand new handle that's raw wood like this one, you want to put some linseed oil on it. Now the, the old timers said you put it on once a day for a week, once a week for a month, once a month for a year, and then once a year after that. Well, I'm getting down to the, to the dregs there. Here we go. And this will goes for any tool, any of your wooden tool handles. If you bought a new Grand Force Brooks axe or something, uh, follow that formula and then once a year and it'll really take care of it. It'll last you forever unless you don't, you overstrike it. But if you don't do this, it'll crack and pay special attention to the end right there. The end is where the wood soaks up material. Uh, wood is like a, a series of straws. But I'll rub that on there. Wear a rubber glove because the old boiled linseed oil was safe to have on your hands, but they actually use a drying agent. It's not really boiled anymore. Unboiled linseed oil will dry very slowly, where boiled linseed oil or the modern version of it dries very quickly. That way you can put it on and, and get right to work on the tool. It won't be all sticky. Once you get that worked in, the heat of your hand does help a little bit. Uh, just take a cloth and just, just wipe off the excess. And it will continue to soak in right there. Then, now we've got a tool that is ready for work. The final tool in the sharpening kit is a very clever, uh, it's a, a gauge that was invented by the Forest Service years ago. Uh, it's a hand tool sharpening gauge and it, it's, a, it's an amazing invention. It works with all of the, the tools. It'll work with like a McLeod and a fire shovel, uh, Pulaski, it's completely suited for that. This is uh, my FSS Pulaski after uh, a season of abuse. We'll, in the next video, we'll do a full resto of this, what I do every year at the end of the year. But this is a, really an interesting tool. So it does all sorts of things. So to start with, uh, what, what it helps you to do is you can determine what this angle should be on the back of your, of your grub hoe right there. So it's designed for it at FS. S only, so this will only work with a, a proper approved ones like council tool, for example. But this right there, if you put this notch on the back right there, or on the bottom, it gives you the angle uh, for your grub hoe right there. Uh, not only that, but it gives you your um, go, no goes on your uh, blades too. Because you these actually wear out. You don't think of things like this wearing out because you know most professional homeowners, you know, you never sharpen that much. But right there will give you the blade um, when is the time uh, to replace it, when it, reaches, when it reaches this line here, and the same with the hoe. You put the hoe here, and it'll tell you when it's time to, to get rid of it, when you've filed it so far that, it will no long, that it's no longer of any use. Also, we have up here um, how to grind uh, the blades on the axe portion, which I'll show you over here now. Here you can see from the top down, now this is the axe portion of it right here. We've got two notch cuts right there. Now that gives you the perfect angle for reference, so right there you can see that the top half inch, meaning the very portion from a half inch up there, that should resemble this angle right here, and then the midpoint right there. Right there gives you, that. You, when you'll see that, you've got it perfectly ground, and there's just no guesswork on it. That is everything a guy needs to put together your whole kit. When you store it, just take uh, and knock your, knock your handles off. Oh, I hate having a wobbly table. and everything stores in here nicely. Uh, again, I'll put links to as much of the stuff as I can find. I'm not gonna put it in there if I can't find the really nice stuff. It is hard to find sometimes, but I, I do believe I can find the bag. Drop those in there. The sharpening guide, these are available too, somewhere. Uh, I don't know exactly where I got that. Two handles, I wanted to put two in there, that's why I did another one up there. And then your sharpening stone. And right there, You've got your, you got your whole kit, everything you need uh, to sharpen anything in the whole world. But you see the webbing on the back right there. These are designed to work with, um, what do they call these things? The old military style clips. So these Alice clips, is that, is that right? 
The Forest Service is steeped in tradition. They move very slowly. <laughs> they stick with uh, what works. You know, they're still using stuff from World War II, but uh, that's kind of the charm of it. And that's one of the things I really like is they, when they find something that works, they, they definitely stick with it. Well, that is probably about all the time we have for today. Next time we're going to, uh, actually, I'm not going to do the plastic. I'm going to do the shovel here next, and we'll do a video on that uh, of what to, uh, this, all this should be done every year. You know, you uh, guys ask, where do I get high quality uh, hand tools? You're not going to find anything of, of good quality from uh, any of your box stores or very rarely through any of your hardware stores. You're going to get a bunch of true temper, ace. It's, it's, not good. it's not good stuff. Thin sheet metal, poor tempering, crummy fiberglass handles. If you want quality tools, if you buy quality tools, it's going to shock you a little bit because you're going to pay double or three times, but that's a tool that will last you your whole life if you, if you do this once a year, if you follow these procedures. What I'd recommend for quality tools is, of course, council tool. If you want just the old school, really high quality with nice handles, US hickory, good heat treat, good tempers, heads that won't come loose, anything from council tool I've ever used is excellent. That's what the majority of fire departments are going to order from. Pulaski, shovels, axes, stay away from fiberglass or any composite handles, just go with, insist on hickory. Um, also, um, rogue, rogue tools uh, are excellent, excellent quality. And that's primarily what I see the majority of now with hand crews uh, on fire lines, a lot of rogue tools and that, no one uses, uses, uses tools harder than those guys. And I've yet to have any rogue tool have a loose handle or any problem with it all. Good steel, good heat treat, really nice. So those are JT Enterprises. I've heard some about that. They, I think it is they make some modular tools, but they're pretty expensive. Um, and unless you're doing this professionally, I probably wouldn't recommend it. I would either go with rogue or council tools. You'll have something that um, you'll enjoy using that's made to work with the body. It's actually designed by people who use tools rather than some marketing nonsense um, like you get at a big box store. So thanks for watching. May God bless you guys. Please keep us in your prayers and we'll see you guys on the next video. It was me and my Teresa against the world. We took all the river had to give. We broke a bed. Bought a crib and left a mountain mansion, nothing to fear.